Hello, I'm Dr. Blasil Mantaring. Uh, today, I will give the lecture on the histology of the female reproductive system, and this will be divided into three parts. This lecture will talk about the histology of the ovaries. This will include the formation of the different ovarian follicles and the development of the female germ cell in the process of oogenesis. Events leading to the process of ovulation and the changes in the ovarian follicles after ovulation will also be described. Ovarian follicles that will not develop into the mature follicle will undergo a process of degeneration called atresia. The female reproductive organs are composed of the internal female organs and the external genitalia. Its development is not complete until after puberty is initiated. The ovary has two general areas, the cortex, which contains the ovarian follicles, and the medulla, the connective tissue core, which contains collagen fibers, occasional smooth muscle cells, and numerous blood vessels. There is no clear demarcation between the cortex and the medulla. Looking at the higher magnification of the ovarian cortex, a low cuboidal germinal epithelium lines the outer surface of the ovary. Beneath this, is an avascular connective tissue called the tunica albuginea. The ovarian follicle contains a single oocyte surrounded by follicular cells. The primordial follicles are the only follicles present at birth. The size of these follicles will be indicative of its maturity. The smaller primordial follicles are located nearer the ovarian surface. As the follicle matures, it gradually increases in size and grows towards the medullary area of the ovary, but it is still within the boundary of the ovarian cortex. Oogenesis, or the development of the female germ cells, starts before birth. Primordial germ cells of females or oogonia originate from the secondary yolk sac and will migrate to the genital ridge that will be the site of the developing female gonad called the ovary. As the oogonia migrate to the genital ridge, it will undergo continuous mitosis up to the fifth month of fetal life until they number in the millions. The oogonia will now produce primary oocytes at the third month of life. The primary oocytes will begin meiosis but this will be arrested at prophase 1 of the first meiotic division. These are the only oocytes present at birth. There are 2 million primary oocytes produced before birth, all arrested at the prophase stage. All of these events occur before birth. Only around 400,000 primary oocytes are present in the ovaries at birth. During ovulation, the primary oocyte in the developing graphene follicle will continue meiosis, resulting into two daughter cells, a secondary oocyte and the first polar body. Each daughter cell is a haploid containing 23N chromosomes, but the secondary oocyte contains the bulk of the cytoplasm. Meiosis will be arrested at metaphase 2. Note that meiosis 1 is completed during ovulation. This is the secondary oocyte released during ovulation. Meiosis will only continue when the secondary oocyte is fertilized. There are four types of ovarian follicles. The least developed of the follicles are the primordial follicles. As the female approaches puberty, some of the primordial follicles undergo further development to become primary follicles. In each menstrual cycle, several primary follicles enter a phase of rapid growth and become secondary follicles. Prior to ovulation, one secondary follicle develops to become the mature or graphene follicle, which ruptures to release the secondary oocyte. The primordial follicles are the only follicles present at birth. It consists of a primary oocyte surrounded by a single layer of flattened follicular cells. The nucleus of the oocyte has a prominent nucleolus. 
Occasionally, the nucleus is not centrally located or what we describe as eccentric in location. Note also that the organelles of the primary oocyte in primordial follicles are clumped in one area located adjacent to the nucleus. The next follicle is the primary follicle. In this follicle, the growing oocyte is surrounded by one or more layers of cuboidal cells. The follicular cells are now called granulosa cells. Glycoprotein is secreted by the oocyte and is deposited into the space between the oocyte and the innermost granulose cells. This condenses to form a highly refractile area called the zona pellucida. Connective tissue surrounding the follicle becomes organized to form the theca folliculi. Basal lamina separates the granulosa cells from the theca cells. The organelles, which was previously clumped in a small group adjacent to the nucleus, is now dispersed throughout the entire cytoplasm. Small fluid spaces start to appear among the proliferating granulosa cells, and when the growing follicle reaches a diameter of about 200 of a micrometer, these spaces coalesce to form an antrum. The liquid in the antrum is called the liquor folliculi, a transudate of plasma but contains a higher concentration of steroids and gonadotrophic hormones. The growing antrum displaces the oocyte to one side. The oocyte is located in the cumulus oophorus, a thickening of the granulosa layer that projects into the antrum. Looking at the secondary ovarian follicle in higher magnification, note that the theca folliculi develop two layers, a richly vascular theca interna and a less vascular theca externa. The cells of the theca interna acquire an extensive smooth endoplasmic reticulum and other characteristics of steroid secreting cells. It synthesizes androgenic steroids that diffuse into the follicle and are converted to estradiol by the granulosa cells. The theca externa is composed of connective tissue. There is no clear demarcation line between the two layers. Only one secondary follicle becomes dominant and is now called the graphian follicle or mature ovarian follicle. At this stage, the oocyte continues meiotic division and produces two daughter cells, the first polar body and the secondary oocyte. Meiosis will be arrested at metaphase two and will only proceed if the oocyte is fertilized. Fluid-filled spaces will appear among the granulosa cells at the base of the cumulus oophorus, resulting in the detachment of the oocyte. The oocyte then floats free in the liquor folliculi surrounded by a few granulosa cells called the corona radiata. In the process of ovulation, the secondary oocyte is released from the graphian follicle and will be caught by the fimbria of the fallopian tube. The oocyte will travel down the oviduct and stay in the ampulla of the fallopian tube where fertilization usually occurs. If the oocyte is not fertilized in 24 hours, it will degenerate and be resorbed within the oviduct. The secondary oocyte is enveloped by two layers during release in the process of ovulation, the outer corona radiata and the inner zona pellucida. There are several factors responsible for ovulation. A sudden surge of luteinizing hormone released from the pituitary gland results in ovulation. A pale translucent area called the stigma or macula pellucida appears in the bulging surface of the mature follicle. The blanching of this area is a result of local cessation of blood flow in the capillaries of the theca interna. This is followed by further thickening of the theca and the overlying tunica albuginea, resulting from enzymatic digestion of the collagen fibers by the enzyme collagenase. Contraction of the smooth muscle fibers in the theca external layer will help also in ovulation. 
This is a laparoscopic observation of spontaneous human ovulation. An ovulatory cycle is a menstrual cycle with no ovulation occurring. This may be characterized by varying degrees of menstrual intervals or irregular menstruation. The ovary that undergoes repeated ovulation will have more scarring in its surface. Females who are taking in pills for contraception will have a smoother ovarian surface. Females in the reproductive age group will have more scarring as compared to females in a younger age group. After ovulation, the wall of the graphene follicle collapses and becomes extensively folded. Blood vessels invade the previously avascular granulosa cell layer. The granulosa cells and theca interna cells then hypertrophy. It develops smooth endoplasmic reticulum, accumulate lipid droplets, and are transformed into lutein cells. By these changes, the follicle is transformed into a corpus luteum. There are two types of corpus luteum. The corpus luteum of menstruation, which regresses in 9 to 10 days if fertilization does not occur. The corpus luteum of pregnancy is formed when the oocyte is fertilized. This lasts for the first two months of pregnancy while the placenta is still developing. It is an important source of progesterone needed to sustain pregnancy. It also secretes the hormone relaxin that relaxes the smooth muscle cells of the uterus, preventing contraction. A higher magnification of the corpus luteum would show the following. Two kinds of lutein cells are now distinguishable. Those arising from the granulosa cells are called granulosa lutein cells, while the smaller, more deeply staining cells arising from the cells of the theca interna are the theca lutein cells. Both types of lutein cells have an abundance of smooth endoplasmic reticulum and lipid droplets in the cytoplasm, characteristic of steroid secreting cells. The two types of lutein cells have different functions. The principal steroid secreted by the granulosa lutein cells is progesterone, while theca lutein cells secrete estradiol and estrone. Follicular atresia is the degeneration of the ovarian follicles and is a normal process in the ovary. It occurs continually throughout a woman's life but accelerates during birth, puberty, and pregnancy. It occurs at any stage of the follicular development. Atresia results in the degeneration and breakdown of the oocyte and granulosa cells. Granulosa cells are shed into the antrum. The basal lamina that separates the granulosa cells from the theca folliculi may thicken to form a glassy membrane, although this is not shown in this slide. The corpus luteum of menstruation regresses in nine days with the absence of fertilization. Its lutein cells undergo apoptosis and macrophages start to invade and phagocytize the cells. A pale staining fibrous scar at the site of the corpus luteum called the corpus albicans, forms and persists for several months. This lecture discussed the development of the ovarian follicles before birth to ovulation. After ovulation, the corpus luteum develops from the ruptured graphene follicle. If pregnancy does not occur, the corpus albicans develops. Follicular atresia or degeneration of the ovarian follicles occurs in all follicles that did not develop into the mature or graphene follicle. Oogenesis or the development of the female germ cell was lectured as well as given emphasis on the two arrests in meiosis that an oocyte undergoes before it reaches completion maturation during fertilization. <laughs>